Vehicula Santa. The Santa. It sounds like a car. Like a like a station wagon. Right? It does, like, it? Looks like a classic, like yeah. like an like an old family station wagon. Welcome to the La Santa. And you know what? And it would make sense then because it would almost certainly have wood paneling. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. that happens to have absolutely. a lot to do with this particular yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I can just see it, you know, coasting with the La Santa. Uh, you know, I, um, let's see. Well, let's take a look. Uh, Glen Morangy La Santa, 12 year old aged whiskey. It is one of my favorite of Glen Morangy. Uh, and that's Glen Morangi, not Glen Morangi, not Glen Mor Mor Morangi. Um, you know, it's Glen Morangi. Um, and La Santa means saint. I believe so. Um, uh, Sounds right. Yeah, I believe so. and means saint in Spanish and in Gaelic. Um, it is a Highland malt. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the regions of Scotland, there are five regions of Scotland. There's uh, Highland, Lowland, Speyside, Campbelltown, and Isla. Um, the Highlands are known for their friendly, sweet, uh, fruity flavors. They're not, they're not peaty like Isla or, you know, over aggressive like Cameltown. It is, uh, you know, it's a great, great, uh, whiskey. Uh, it's one of my favorite from uh, Glen Morangy. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I love this and the Quinta Rubin and the Signet. Obviously, everyone loves the Signet. It's like $200 a bottle. Uh, How do you not love it? Yeah, I mean... You know, even if you hate it, you say you love yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, Signet doesn't even count, right? Like, you know, when 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 you're talking about Signet, it's what, 200 bucks for a bottle? If, if you don't like a $200 bottle, then, you know, you know, it, 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 what a waste of money. Um, Nobody can help you at that point. Yeah, exactly. Um, do, doesn't even count. But the, the Quinta Rubin and the La Santa are amazing. Um, and they're m my favorites. Um... It is a single malt, right? So single malt means one distillery using pot stills, uh, aged at least three years in oak. This is 12, so we know it's over three years. Um, and it's made from malted barley, okay? Um, this was aged in uh, 12, uh, 10 years in ex bourbon casks, and then uh, finished for two years in Oloroso, uh, Oloroso and Pedro Menes sherry casks. They just, they take 50% in, uh, of the tenure and put in Oloroso, and they take 50% and they put in um, Pedro Menez, and they age it for two more years. Um, they are very particular about their uh, ex-bourbon casts in, uh, in uh, Glen Morangy. They only age it for two years. Uh, I mean, uh, they only use it for two terms. So they have first fill and second fill, that's it. They don't, uh, they don't reuse barrels after, uh, after that. Um, in the first fill, that gives you vanilla and coconut. Uh, and the second fill that gives you honey and like a minty uh, character, um, and uh, you know between those two, uh, in it gives you a much more um, uh, uh, barrel-driven oxygen on on uh, uh, oxidiz oxidization, um, and with for a little bit more like a greater um, uh, complexity, right? Uh, Daniel, hmm. a little bit about the brand. He's, yes. Daniel's going to do his reading thing. Daniel's go. always been a great reader. So we'll do this. Uh, Glenn Morangi started life as an old farm distillery, but was licensed in 1843 by William Matheson, who was already involved with Paul Blair. It remained a rustic operation for years. In the 1880s, Alfred Barnard described Glenn Morangi as the most ancient Morangi. Morangi. There See, you go. this is why we have to do this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that people don't make this mistake. Uh -huh, uh. Ah. Arthur. As the most ancient and primitive described, Alfred Barnard described Glen Morangi as the most ancient and primitive we have seen and almost in ruins. Outside investors were brought in just in time and the distillery was rebuilt. For much of the 20th century, its key role was to supply malt for blends such as Highland Queen and James Martin's. In the 1970s, though, Glen Morangy started laying down casks for a 10-year-old single malt. It was the best decision the company ever made. And by the late 1990s, this had become the best-selling single malt in Scotland. Glen Morangy's stills are tall and thin and produce a light, very pure spirit. The real skill of the distillery has been in the way it has combined this elegant spirit with wood. Indeed, Glen Morangy has been a pioneer of wood finishes. After endless experiments with increasingly exotic barrels, it has become an expert in how particular casks can twist and refocus mature malt before bottling. Yeah, and uh, they're on their own. They're owned by a conglomerate now, right? So they're owned by Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, uh, Moy, 
Uh, so that um, smells nice. Yeah, um, they're they're um, uh, they're you know. Uh, that's one of the main the main reasons the brand has become super huge because you know they, they've got they supply billions, everybody. They, they've got billions of dollars in uh, in it right so let's take a look at the nose oh isn't Love that good and it. so uh, Glenn Morangi Lasanta has always been that kind of like party favorite right so like uh, for you know locally around here it's anywhere between like fifty to sixty dollars bottle and it's and just an easy drinker it's a crowd pleaser and you're, you're, it's not overly peaty you know obviously because it's a highland so on the nose I'm getting plum raisin a bit of caramel yeah a little like toasted nut I taste the toasted nut more than I smell it mm. but I smell the rest like a tobacco leaf Mm. Like raspberry, um, oh, that's so good. This is like so hard and then core like sherry. Yeah, you really yeah. taste the sherry. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's all Spanish sherry, right? Um, uh, orange. It doesn't even really need any water. No, no, it's a. Uh, well, it's already been proofed down. So this is forty-three yeah. percent uh, ABV. It's been proofed down a little bit. It is. Uh, uh, chill filtered um, and they do add E150 so uh, that coloring is artificial and uh, you know uh, because it's below 46% they have to chill filter it uh, otherwise if you start to get cloudy in the glass which I don't care if it's cloudy and you know and I've never I've never cared it's uh it's really the only thing the distillers care about generally people don't care about it so much it's a refinement yeah well actually it's the only reason is uh, is because um, when people put uh, put it in a glass with right. ice, it look it looks cloudy, right? So it only, confuses people. Yeah, and then all the all, all the real whiskey drinkers only you know always request an uh, unchilled filter because you lose some of the character, right? Sure. And mm, it's brown sugar on the palate for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like like you know you get like brown sugar orange it's super like in, in, if you've had a, in a sherry cast finish this is just another great example of a sherry cast finish um i like this actually more than most because yeah. some sherry cask finished liquors i've had i don't yeah. care for that much mm. frankly sherry in general is mm. kind of a hit or miss with me mm. so this is unusual for me to really like one like this but yeah. this is eminently drinkable for 43 percent um it is silky and the finish is long it's not it's not watery you know and, and that's why i said i don't need to add any yeah. water it doesn't yeah. need it yeah um it would, it would be too much there's a little bit of hazelnut on the finish and uh like dark chocolate i'm gonna add just a little bit of water see what happens um my guess is it's gonna be a little too watered down uh once uh, once it's been proofed down uh, much Try mm. a little bit of ice on mine rather than the water. Yeah. And Sometimes the cool is nice, but less oh, water. It got actually a little bit more alcohol uh, when I added water. Yeah. Uh, in, in, and gave it uh, gave it a little bit of a spike, actually. Yeah, it's, 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 watering down, it's watering down all of those sweet notes. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting more of the alcohol in your nose. Yeah. yeah. No, and actually, it's not the nose. It's actually my tongue. Like, I'm getting, like, spikiness on my tongue. Oh. Like uh, when when like a burn like yeah, you know yeah. you, you get like an alcohol burn uh, when because the sweetness when, is yeah when yeah. when it's like and I think the the oils were, were helping keep that alcohol alcohol burn and the uh, when I added water they broke down the oils and so it was not there's nothing to coat it once that once that happened yeah and you know what honestly on the ice it it lost all of its character. Yeah, yeah, it lost all of its character. I was the 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 little bit of extra cold yeah. uh, just crashes all the main flavors, mm. and it also crashes the alcohol. Yeah, I uh, I can definitely see that. What I can see is smoking a cigar or a hookah uh, and drinking this on ice all night long with friends. That's true. I, I, I you could drink a whole bottle yeah, all I, night I, long yeah, and I, not have a problem. Yeah, I, I could, and you know. 
I, well, I always, your problem wouldn't be with the yeah, drinking. Yeah, I, I always like trying it also with ice, mainly because that's what a lot of people order in a bar, right? Like, I know it's it's 2020 and there's COVID and, you know, when's the last time you've been in a bar? Uh, but when people, you know, when people go out, they, then they drink, the, then a lot of people order it on ice, right? Uh, so I always like to give it a try on ice. I wouldn't drink this on ice again. Mm. Not unless we were drinking it all night. No. In fact, I, I didn't like it with uh, with water added. Um, I liked it more with that. I liked it more straight. Mm -hmm. More, I liked it more neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. It was very good. It's always been one of my favorites. Like I said, um, they changed this about uh, five, six years ago. It used to be forty six percent ABV, um, and then they uh, uh, they proofed it down and they changed the recipe a little. You don't uh, happen to still have one of those old bottles, do you? I don't. I don't I'm have surprised. I'm I surprised. don't have one of those old bottles. What I do have is the uh, Glen Morangy uh, Quinta Rubin, and I don't have. So very recently, I I discovered that they the new Quinta Rubin is. 14 years old instead of 12 years old and they changed the color of the bottle as well so i need to get my hands on the 12 year old uh um, old bottle and I, and I literally just found this out the other day and i and uh, so i need to get the old bottle to compare the old with the new and blah blah, blah. look uh, forward to that update yeah um what we will end up doing is one thing i've done quite a few times you can get a little tasting set of uh of the the core line of blend morning and i've i've done this with friends in the past and i just take the, the the core line and you know go bottle by bottle comparing and we'll do a whole episode on on that core line um you know just like the taster set uh and you know and it'll be a great uh, great thing for you guys to be able to try at home um that's that, that's pretty that's much, pretty much it. that's pretty much it oh um this won the double gold oh no uh this won the world whiskey award in 2017 uh, and the 2017 international whiskey competition for best single malt uh 12 year old uh blend uh no, sorry 12 year old single malt um so won some awards personally and it's it's won every you know, uh, when, whenever we do a, a Glen Morangy taste uh, tasting set, uh, it's always a cross between this and the Quinta Rubin. Um, obviously, disregarding the Signet because, you know, that's not you know when comparing a, a, a sixty dollar bottle with a two hundred dollar bottle is not fair competition. Um, but it's a you know it's a it's a great whiskey. Where would you drink it? I would drink this anywhere you would drink fine liquor. <laughs> Which is basically anywhere. Yeah. I um, I love it. It's very nice. I've not had that one before, I don't think, actually. The, you haven't had this one? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, Daniel's always been a bourbon drinker. Um, and so, rye. Rye. Hipsters. I... All right. Um, they just keep raising the prices on you. That's the only reason I have to branch out. Fair enough. Oh, because all of the hipsters I, are know, coming on to I, I would, I, I would place this. And so I currently place this on my second... Uh, you know, second from the bottom, third, uh, third shelf, right? Um, I would put this anywhere between, you know, third, uh, third and second shelf. I mean, uh, depending on your budget, right? Uh, my, my, my shelf, my, my, my top shelf is bled into, uh, you know, the, the second and third shelf. But uh, I, you know, I'd put this all day long on my, you know, second or third shelf. How about you? Yeah, I would, I would put my, uh, put my like third shelf in the front of my cabinet, and I mm. put this right behind it, mm. and then I would stash a couple of those other bottles. <laughs> And maybe put like a shitty bottle in front of it to kind of yeah, hide it. Yeah, so yeah. nobody drinks it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I always keep the, my shittiest liquor in the carafe yeah, yeah, to yeah. confuse people. Yeah. So there yeah, you fair go. Enough. Uh, today's toast is. Oh, you need more. I need a little touch. Just, just for the toast. Yeah, you need a little touch. Not for, not for a little time. Let's see. Um, let's see. Today's toast is uh, May You Live to Be 100 and One Extra Year to Atone. Cheers. All, all hail cow. All hail cow.